there, happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me for another craft night with friends here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time we can relax and craft together. Uh, so tonight I am continuing on another unfinished project. This is my apron. Uh, it's a pretty green apron. And uh, I am stitching these green herbs all over it. So this is from our garden herbs uh, embroidery transfer pattern here. And uh, we have one more to go and that'll be it. I think we'll do one more and then uh, we'll maybe add a little extra text. There's like one little part of the apron that looks like it might need something there yet. But um, I think we'll get this last one done tonight. So I'm stoked. All right, let's get going. All right, everyone, thanks all for joining again. Nice seeing you pop in. So here's where we left off. Again, another unfinished project. We are cranking them out this week. This is sort of a, a second free week for us because uh, it's not quite July and it's not quite June. It like crosses over this week, so we don't have a full week of working on a normal project. So we're breaking out the unfinished ones. So we have rosemary, basil, sage, thyme, dill, and mint. And uh, there's one more in here. I don't remember which one though. Basil, sage, dill, thyme, rosemary, mint. Oh, parsley. So we have not done parsley yet. So this one I wanted to go down kind of in this corner here. Uh, and then I think we'll just like put my initials or something here. I, I'm planning on using this apron, so. Or maybe it could just say garden or, or it could say something, but I think a little bit of text up here will kind of even the whole thing out when we're done. I don't, we won't get to that today. We'll just do this parsley. Uh, and we're satin stitching basically everything in. And I believe we're doing a split stitch for the lines. That's kind of the standard we've been doing. So it's basically one color. However, when there are little skinny lines in there, I have been adding a color that's close to this background. So I'm gonna press this first. It's been folded up a little, and then we will preheat our fabric and uh, do this iron-on transfer. So let's get the iron going. Let's get the mat out here, and I'll get you guys a little bit lower here tonight. We're gonna get even lower when we start stitching so you can see see everything. But I think it's looking really cute. I'm gonna actually flip it around so it's on the back and I'm gonna press the back so I'm not right on the stitches. I don't think it'll matter that much really. It's not even wrinkly where I'm gonna stitch, but it's nice to look at a non-wrinkled piece when I'm working on a different section, I think. Why not? But look how nice the back's looking. I mean, I'm not worried about washing this at all. Everything is all nicely tucked in all on its, uh, all by itself here. Okay, so uh, I am going to, I haven't done this for the other ones, but just because I'm gonna, this is what I usually recommend when you're using an iron-on transfer uh, to protect your pressing surface with a, just a paper towel. This will, uh, just in case your, your weave of your fabric is a little bit bigger, it'll protect the ink from going through onto your ironing board, for example. Don't want that. Okay, I'm just trying to flatten this whole guy out. So I think I kind of want it in line with this, but I'm sort of being all over as well, so it doesn't have to be so perfect. So I think kind of tucked in right about there will do the trick. All right, cool. So I'm gonna first kind of preheat my fabric. All right, and I think we're about right there. It looked kind of decent, I think. All right, getting the iron on the top, counting around to 10. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just gonna peek. Looking good. 
totally fine. All right, there we are. Done with that iron. And you can use these uh, around five times. They'll get lighter and lighter every time you use them. So you might have to stay on a little bit longer, but here's just a look at the transfer. So we're ready to go there. And none transferred to the paper towel, so that's, that's good. I wasn't really expecting it to, but I thought it better be safe than sorry. All right, I'm gonna get this in the hoop here. I think I'm gonna stitch the text first. That's, that's kind of what I've been doing so far. And it's been working pretty well. Let's remove this. Oh, let me, uh... Oh, just peeking through your comments. Like, if I if I miss a comment, like, if you have a question, uh, just ask it again, and I'll try and get it. All right, I have this nice little four-inch hoop that's working perfectly for this. And uh, I have some clips out here. I think I might actually clip back a bunch of this fabric. So this is a lot of bulk just hanging out everywhere. Uh, sometimes it can be easier to like get some of this stuff out of the way. So I'm just gonna kind of roll this up a hair. Like so. Just throw a couple clips in here. This will make it a little wrinkly here, but um, it'll make it a lot easier to embroider. I'm going to kind of do the same thing down here, just kind of shush the rest of this out of the way. I don't always do this, but every once in a while it just feels like it needs it. Let's get the sides. I don't want to deal with all the bulk today, let's just squish it together. Okay, and I also will probably stitch sideways like this because it's the easiest position. There's less, um, there's none of this bulk here at all. But this will uh, make it easier to move around a little bit. All right, I'm gonna grab some floss. So here's my scrap bin of floss. After I'm done with projects, embroidery projects, I just throw all the floss in here. And ooh, good, right on top I got that green. And this is that other green I think we'll need a little bit of it tonight. Actually, we got some some pieces in here that might work already. There we go. This looks like eh, a little short. Okay. Um, and then last up, let's grab our needle. Got my cute little needle minder here uh, from Marie. Okay, I'm set. So, and I think I did backstitch, yeah, backstitch for the text, and I suspect I used two strands of floss on this. See, what I should have done, <laughs> you know, I just got these project trackers made. Uh, if I would have had one of these with this project, I'm going to do that for all my projects from here on out, but uh, this is one of our free downloads, uh, the project tracker sheet, you can just um, print them out. But I would have made a note on here that I'm using two strands of floss, um, and I would have like wrote down where I left off to or what I want to do or I would have mentioned that I wanted to put like a little initials up in the corner or drew it out or something all that I want out of my head and on here because who knows I might pick this up in 10 years again you know I mean that's kind of how my uh my quilt project that that um jean quilt that's kind of how that project went all right so since I'm doing two strands I'm going to do that loop method of starting, which means I'm going to double up uh, my length. So I, I usually like stitching with like 18 to 24 inches. I'm going to double that up so it's extra long, and then then we'll snip, snip that length. I'm only going to pull one strand. Ultimately, we want, we want two, but we'll actually be folding in, in half. So let's grab the one, just separating that one, and pulling all the way out. There we are. So this will set aside if we need more. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, we needed a couple. Because we're, we're satin stitching all these, so that's going to take some time. Take some amount of floss. 
All right, let's just get to clean up that edge a little bit. And I am threading the side that has the, the two ends here. So I'll have like this loop on this side. It's not really a loop, it's like the fold. Uh, that's not the part that we're threading. We're threading the um, ends here. Oh, thanks, Catherine. Catherine says this apron is so pretty. I'm really loving this. So, you know, if you've been here before, I always have, a, you know, I always have some sort of agenda <laughs> with each of um, my projects. I just want to learn something or test out an idea and all that. And me for this, it was just kind of simply, um, let's fill in these cute little designs with satin stitch. I don't do that very often. I just tend to outline, outline stuff. Uh, so it was kind of fun filling it all in. So, all right, loop method. I am starting from the back and pulling up, but I have not pulled through all the way. I got a good section back there. I'm going to make my first stitch. It's going to be a back stitch here. I'm going to pull. There we go. And now I'm going to go to the back. And you can see I'm, I'm pulling a little bit, but I have that loop right there. I'm going to actually stick my needle through that loop and then I'm going to keep pulling and that makes, or like locking that loop in place. So now I can just continue stitching and, and there's no ends, there's no nothing, that's it. I'm, I'm secure. <laughs> it's kind of magic. Uh, it only works with you know, being able to fold the thread in half, so like an even amount. So this would be, uh, this would be, you know, two strands made from one strand. So you could do four strands made from two. All right, so we're gonna just hang out and backstitch this text. Hey, Jennifer, so, okay, Jennifer threw up the avocados on the, on the emojis on there. So you, you're growing an avocado plant, right? I think I saw that over in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. I have avocado plant questions, y'all. And um, we're stitching green, so maybe, maybe it fits. So we, like all of COVID peoples, <laughs> started uh, growing a avocado plant from an avocado. So... Um, we are well behind the train for that. So it's just started growing. So it's, oh, Jennifer says, I know nothing. <laughs> Gretchen says, I learned on TikTok. Okay. So someone's got to know something. Oh, uh, so I'm, it's, it's taller now, right? So it's a, like a, I don't know, a foot and a half tall. And it just, it just got that way. Like it, it just started growing. It was, we planted it in, in the ground right away and it just was like that for a while. Um, but now it's got a few leaves on top. Like, I don't know, maybe four to six leaves. Everything seems fine. Aren't we supposed to, like, do something? Like, cut it down? <laughs> to get it, like, hardier? Or so it grows more leaves? Or, I don't know, isn't there some aspect of, like, chopping it apart <laughs> that, that I'm supposed to kind of do at this stage? But while I was thinking about it, I thought I'd thought I'd ask here uh, before going and looking it up. <clears throat> oh, Gretchen says yes. So, like, just do I cut like the entire top off? And oh, Paula says no. Okay, all right. So, so I'm at square one that I can, I guess. Okay, so Gretchen says, counterintuitive, but yes, you lop it off. So just like the top, like all of it, like the whole top. Like how far down do I go or what do I leave? Like how big of a stick do I just leave? I mean, I get the, so, okay, so Gretchen says, you lop off the top and then the energy, oh, like the, the energy like goes into the rest of it. So, um... That makes sense. 
Okay, so it forces energy, yes, to leave like six inches. So really, so I cut the whole thing down to six inches. I mean, I'm totally up for trying it because I'm not, you know, married to this avocado plant. I can always just start another one if it goes to hell. So, so I'm totally up for lopping it off. Although now that I think about the act of actually doing, the, doing that, it's making me sad. But <laughs> all right. So, and, you know, like, theoretically, you want it like a sturdier, you know, shorter one or something, right? Oh, Jennifer says, I could try one as I have two, two growing out of the seed. Oh, that's cool. You got two growing out of, out of it. Yeah, so I'll, I'll take a picture maybe later. Oh, I don't know if I'll have time tonight, but sometime this week, I'll take a picture of it when it's light in the living room and then then you can see the before and after I'll I'll uh, show you what it looks like now and I'll lop it off <laughs> Paula says lol I grew one in college actually grew several just planted the seed halfway in the dirt oh nice so that's that's all I did too so I didn't do any of that starting stuff like I didn't I, I probably peeled it but I didn't um wrap it in a paper towel or anything like that. I mean, a lot of TikTokers were doing that, but then I saw one that says, hey, you can just, here's one planted in the ground, here's one planted just in water, here's one whatever, so I'm like, screw this, I'm putting it right in the ground right away. I think I happen to have a uh, empty container out for some other reason with dirt in. I think I, I think I, something probably died, actually. Killed something else, some other plant, and so I put this in, the, in its place. I think that feels familiar. Oh, Jennifer says, I think they take five years to produce fruit. So, that'd be cool. Um, so, is, isn't that one of these plants, though, that you need, like, a male and female version of the plant, or... Or is it one that you have to, like, what do you call that when you merge, when you, when you cut into it and, ha and then stick another <laughs> stick in it? It's not propagating. Maybe they do still call it that. Don't you have to do, isn't it something like that for avocados? I guess I don't know. I have, like, some vague memory of thinking it needs, oh, yeah, to cross-pollinate. Oh, grafting. Yep, that's that's the word I'm trying to think of. So don't you have to, like, graft it or cross-pollinate it to, to have it actually grow fruit? Because that'd be dang freaking cool to have avocados just growing out, <laughs> out of my living room. Like, the heck, that'd be awesome. Oh, dang, a friend in California planted one, and it's now 20 years old tree with a huge crops. Paula, that's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. I feel like if I keep it living, 20 years will go by and <laughs> at some point, and it might still be alive. Oh, okay, Teresa says avocado trees are both male and female, but they can't easily self-pollinate. Okay, so maybe that's what it was. Because the male and female parts are, oh, active at different times. Well, that seems not <laughs> economical. That's funny. So, all right, I read a thing. Have any of you heard this before? I read this. Oh God, probably on Facebook or some Twitter thing or some meme or something, <laughs> you know, where we get our information these days. Uh, I heard that, okay, yeah, so like some trees don't have the male and female uh, parts to it, so they have to cross-pollinate between different trees. And... Uh, cities, so this is what I've heard. Let me know if you've heard anything like this. Um, that cities on purpose planted in city planning, you know, ages ago, on purpose planted primarily male trees because the female ones would have all the, like, 
flowers that would fall or whatever. It would be pretty messy or something, right? So in order to keep the streets less messy, they've planted male trees. However, male trees are what all the pollen comes out of and that's why and because of because they've planted all of these male trees that have all the pollen that's why we have such big pollen issues um in cities and, and everywhere so fact or or fact or cap as they say so uh, does that is that true that sounds valid <laughs> Uh, I'm curious if anyone else has heard anything like that before. Alright, so we got our parsley done. So I stitch is a little bit different. I got just chit chatting, I guess, instead of um, paying it too close attention. On these other ones, I think I did most of the big lines with like one big long stitch. This one I kind of did a few stitches, but it looks fine still. Okay. Moving on to the parsley leaves. Um, oh, Paula says it didn't take hers 20 years to start bearing. So mine will always be an indoor plant. Oh, maybe I'll, maybe in the hot, hot summer I could take it outside. Actually, now I could probably take it outside. It's warm like a normal summer, but yeah, it, it would definitely come inside. Hmm. So I think I'm going to, since I have you know, not tons of thread left. I think I'm going to just jump to here. Actually, I might go through the backs of my stitches a little bit to get closer to that point. So I don't have a big jump on the back. And we're going to start stitching the um, split stitch that I didn't hear. So I might not have, Gretchen, I might not have gotten it totally right, but it had something to do with that there was more pollen in the male trees. And some trees are not cross-pollinating, or, or the opposite of that. Whatever it is where they can pollinate themselves, like they have both the male and female um, parts to pollinate the tree. So yeah, and, and I've, I don't know how that works either. That's, you know... I know the parts of a flower and I don't, I don't understand how, how like certain ones are only male, male and only female. I don't, I don't, I did not get that far in plant biology or whatever. So I'm not, yeah, it depends on the kind of trees for sure. So anyway, so, oh, Teresa says, yeah, I heard that too. It just sounded, I, I heard that this week, and I'm like, oh, dang, that sounds, that sounds like it's just got to be true. <laughs> uh, curious if anyone else had any insight. All right. Jennifer, basically, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. All right, so if it's hard, like, okay, so avocado trees, Teresa is saying avocado trees have both, are both male and female, but they can't easily self-pollinate because they are active at different times. So does that mean I need, like, two avocado plants? chilling together um or yeah i don't know <laughs> i need to know more but right now i think i'm feeling good with the like chop it down to six inches i'm 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 okay with that all right so here's here's my first stem stitch and or not stem stitch uh split stitch and i got enough thread here and i'm right at this little leafy guy i think i'm gonna just go ahead and and stitch this um we're gonna do a satin stitch. I think I'm gonna start, there's this little folded over edge of the leaf here. I think that one I'm gonna do satin stitch that go this way. And then the rest of the leaf, I think I'm gonna go a different direction. That's kind of how we've been playing this game. Um, each leaf, the stitches kind of go in a different direction. So then that's what's separating. Like there's no, nothing is dividing this leaf from this leaf except 
stitching in a different direction. And I think it's effective. Like it, it's, I can tell each one of these leaves just fine. So I'm hoping we get that same effect here with this little, you can see it's just got a little itty bitty fold in the leaf. So let's stitch the fold this direction. Oh, Paula says, I know this is a problem with ginkgo trees. Uh, they have a separate male and female, and one of them is very stinky, not good for landscapes. Oh, that's so interesting. See, now I need to know all of the things. All right. You know what? Now I'm going to rotate. I know I'm moving around a lot, but it's just because I'm dealing with the bulk. But now I'm going to rotate this direction because this is where the least amount of bulk is. I think I'm going to just start at the bottom here. We're going to go straight across. And we're going to just fill in these little, little bloop de bloops. Oh, and I have tv news so you know the great british baking show that we love and uh, um they have that uh pottery one now the great is it a great the what do they call that one the pottery what's the pottery one called i don't remember uh but there's that pottery one that has the kind of a similar format I just saw on Netflix there's another one for jewelry making. So I just started watching that, and I'm like halfway through the first episode. And ugh. oh, yeah, the Great Pottery Throwdown. That's the other one. Now there's one, um, I think it's called, it's called something stupid, like Shine Bright or something. I don't know. Uh, but there's a, there's a jewelry making one, and that's been fun to watch so far. But it's like, again, a similar format. Another British show, I think. Keep running out of TV. <laughs> so they keep giving me more of those. So that's nice of the TV people. Oh, Gretchen said she watched it and it's very cool. Yeah, it's already fun. Just anytime people are making stuff is so, so neat. Oh, and I guess that the craft show is, the making it is out again, but I don't, we don't get normal TV very well, so I don't, I don't really get a chance to, to watch that show, which is a bummer. All right. I think, I think we got something here. It's awkward stitching it because... You're like, oh, is this going to be enough? Just the change in direction, and it's so small. But I think you get a little bit of a sense that that guy's going a different direction, so you get a barely just that teeny sense of that that's being folded up a little bit. Yeah, I think that's fine. All right, I have, meh, I have a little left. I might have just enough to stitch a little bit more. Let's... Eh, you know what? I'm going to weave in the end. This is just going to cause trouble, stitching with just this little amount. All right, let's start fresh. So I wove in those edges, or the, the end, so we still have, like, no end sticking out anywhere. It's awesome. All right, got our start going. Let's get another thread here. Ooh, Jennifer, that sounds super fun. Jennifer says, I want to paint wine bottles and put decoupage on them and bottle lights. Ooh, bottle lights, that's fun. Or to teach my ladies on Monday. Oh, fun. Okay. So the one thing I'm just going to try and remember as I stitch this one is we have some of those little stems, those like veins, center veins of crossing over. So those I'm actually going to try and stitch with um, 
that second color. So this is actually another piece of floss there. It looks like it's the background color, but it's, it's floss. And I've done that with the mint as well. Parsley is pretty similar to both of those. Um, so I will just kind of leave a space for that. Then we'll come back later and, and do that color. So I'm going to just do my best to leave a space. And if need be, I still have this nearby so I can kind of search out where where that line should have gone if I accidentally cover it up. Oh my gosh, Noeline, it's, oh man, that's scary. That's not, not nice at all. Alright, so same thing. I'm going to do that loop method. This time, though, I actually have stitches available to me already. I, I'm going to start. I'm going to start down here. So I'm going to actually just grab one of these stitches. I'm just going underneath one of those stitches, and I'm going to just loop across that stitch. And I think we're going to be just fine, fine, just like that. Alright, so I think we'll do the uh, split stitch. First up to this point and then I'll get that little kind of baby leaf in the corner there. And then beyond that is that, that light color that I'll do later. So I'm going to jump back down here. Okay, I'm going kind of right in the center. It's kind of a heart shape, so I'm going right at, at the center of the heart to like the, the point of the heart. And we'll just go on either side from there. So in other plantiness, is it true that um, apples have to be grafted to grow? Like they're not planted from seed anymore, they're just grafted? Is, is that true? I heard that the other day too. Ugh, Jennifer, that's how it is here and I don't know. It, Everything's open again and makes me a little bit nervous. Ah, you guys, it's my birthday next week. <laughs> I, I think uh, on Tuesday, so, uh, and I'll, I'll be here in the evening, so <clears throat> we can, uh, <laughs> chill out here for my birthday next week. All right, more of these little shapes that we're just filling in here. <laughs> Thanks, Gretchen. Okay, apples can be grafted, but they have to cross, so they still have to do the cross-pollination thing. I just... I feel like that's stuff I should know. Ooh, that one was kind of weird. Oh wait, it's because I didn't stitch that other one in yet. So this is a little goofy stitching with satin stitch. Um, Cause these loopy shapes are so close to each other. I wonder if I should have gone maybe sideways. Eh, we'll just keep going. Because they have like, kind of like, 
three areas of stitching so that of, of like leaves they go like outward and then there's like two little side leaves on, on these guys so I don't know if I should be switching for the side ones but I guess right now I'm just gonna keep in the same direction and see if it looks okay oh dang Linda says the landscaper is planting an apple tree next week and has eight different kinds of apples. That's crazy. So that's definitely grafted then. If they're, like, I've heard that you can graft, graft them to, like, pear trees and stuff, too, if you need, if you don't, if you can't find yourself an apple tree to graft the apples to. So that's so interesting. So I wonder if, um, I wonder if, like, well, I'm sure, like, you can point out, like, which branch is, is what apple. Ugh, so interesting. All right, I'm doing one of the little bloops of the, the leaves, and I have one little leaf bloop underneath here, too. Oh, because you only have the AstraZeneca vaccine. So we don't even, we don't have the AstraZeneca. We have, we have the other ones. Oh, and, okay, so you're first getting Pfizer and Moderna in October. Oh, mostly return travelers. Yep. Yep, yep. Oh, Gretchen says, um, when you do like the different route, eventually one kind of takes over. How interesting though. Apples are a big deal here in um, Minnesota. Uh, I'm sure I've said it before because it's apparently a thing that if you're in Minnesota you have to tell people but the Honeycrisp was developed at the University of Minnesota here so I'm, I, I know I must have said that before ooh pink lady apples yeah those are pretty Oh, we'll be getting the AstraZeneca soon in the U.S.? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, we also had a walnut that was a black walnut roof because it's strong. Oh, then you chop off the top and graft an English walnut for taste. Fascinating! Oh my gosh! So we have um, several black walnut trees. And man, do those make a mess. <laughs> we found that out. That, oh, you can actually dye fabric and your hands with this. Well, that's interesting, grafting a different walnut to it so it tastes better. Interesting. Oh yeah, Gretchen, flour, at least back in the day, was a main thing here. That's, I mean, we have the river going right through and that was all flour mills they have like a there's a whole thing called like there's like the mill city museum um by the by the water there and that's just such a cool tour you get a little bit of the history of all the flour and i mean these buildings would just blow up because it's super duper flammable and all the dust in the air the flour dust so that would all catch on fire and these buildings would just explode. It's kind of crazy. Oh, interesting. Pamela says, one of my old neighbors has a cherry tree with four different kinds of cherries on it. And it was a lot of fun because they didn't fruit all at the same time. Well, see, now that's fascinating. Uh, like, that's a good reason. Like, then you have fruit at different times if they're different different uh, cherries. So interesting. Dang, I'm, I have a lot to, like, dig into. <laughs> <laughs> in this stuff clearly it's all just so interesting all right i'm done with this parsley leaf except for um going back and getting that other little green in i'm just kind of jumping back down because i'm gonna there's like another uh, i don't have that much thread left but there's another like stem i think maybe i'll get both get all the stems right now i think i can probably do that with what's left of my floss with this one up to there and there and then maybe I'll maybe I'll do the light green ones right away just to get those done with and they're kind of nice to have there while I'm doing the other sand stitch stitches 
and then we'll go back to the dark green. Man, if I don't finish this today, I mean, I think I still will. But if not, you know, I think we'll work on this a little bit tomorrow anyway. I'd love to finish this project, and I did want to have something written in this upper left corner. I don't quite know what yet. I kind of want to do it just like cursive with a chain stitch, though. For some reason, I feel like I know that <laughs> already. I just don't know what the text will be yet. I might just write AT in it for Alyssa Thomas. I think it's kind of funny that my initials just spell at. I think that's funny. So maybe I'll just do that. I don't know. We'll have to decide tomorrow. All right. I do have a little bit of thread left. I think I'm going to just, let's get this little heart-shaped guy down here. Oh, I know, Embroidery of the Month teaser. Um, okay. Well, yeah, because that's tomorrow, you guys. So today and tomorrow are the last days to get the hummingbird embroidery and our little like, if you got the kit, you got one of these little extra hummingbird stickers, this glittery glittery hummingbird. So that that's in the kit um, as a fun little bonus. Uh, the kits get, for the embroidery of the month, get a little, little fun bonus in it. Um, yeah, so tomorrow, right when we're done with the show here, so at, at well, kind of at 10, at 10 p.m., so it's a little different. It's not going to be at midnight anymore because I can't stay up that late anymore. So at 10 p.m., uh, we'll be taking down the hummingbird on Wednesday. And uh, we'll be putting up the new one uh, shortly after that. And I'm still not going to wait up till midnight for that. So... Uh, just a little after uh, 10 you'll see the next the next um, month so it's kind of a little mini right before July <laughs> is when when it'll be up from now on um let's I'm trying to think of a little clue Oh, look at this nice little piece. I'm going to use this. This is probably going to be folded in half, maybe just enough. Oh, maybe here's a longer one. Oh, yeah, that's better. Get one of these, and then I can get all... There's just three little places for it. Oh, I don't even have, like, the floss colors near me. All right, how about, this is maybe a little too much, but there is text in it this time. However, it's a little bit different than the text we've done before. How about that? That's a big clue, that's a big design clue. All right, let's get these three. I'm gonna just loop through the end of this here. It's not all text, but there is text in it. All right, there's that. Here's this one. This is almost the same color as the, the background, the apron. last up this little part that we left in the satin stitch to here there we go all right that was easy enough let's weave in those ends and we just have the one or the two little leaves 
left. Oh, I just got like a faint smell. I'm I'm right by the kitchen. <laughs> like I'm in, I'm stitching in the dining room here. That's where my setup is. This like the small like not really a dining room, but like this pass through area that's theoretically a dining room, uh, but it's right by the coffee maker. And I just got this little hint of coffee smell and dang, would that be delicious right now? Ugh, but I would never sleep ever again, but yum. All right, let's put these little ends together. Hopefully this will get me through both of these leaves, but we may actually need one more. These, these, um, the satin stitching takes up lots of thread. Okay, so let's go in the back here. Just looping through some stitches again. And I think we'll, we'll just continue doing the satin stitching like how we are. Start with just a continuation of this line. Uh oh, so I'm gonna get this hanging piece out of my way because I don't want to accidentally stitch that part of the apron into, into this. Where did I end up at the top or bottom? Yeah, Gretchen, that's sort of my limit too. I, in my head, it's still like a 4 p.m. is my cutoff, but it's it's probably more like two. Oh yeah, I should mention that the 10 p.m. that we switch over the uh, embroidery of the month. Like I said, it's gonna be 10 p.m. now instead of midnight, just so I'm not up so late. Um, but that 10 p.m. is central time. So I suppose that's a important bit of info. This will be the first time we're changing it over on the new website, so hopefully it all goes smoothly, but uh, if not, uh, bear with us. I think uh, we're trying to come up with a plan so it's easy and smooth uh, on the site, but we'll see. <laughs> I think we are going to need another whole piece of floss. Gosh, this might not even be enough for, for this one leaf. So I learned that parsley, to tell the difference, or one of the differences to tell the difference between a parsley plant and a cilantro plant is that cilantro has more curved C-shaped leaves like at the tip, and parsley is more pointy, has a more pointy tipped leaf. But that would mean that they would need to be next to each other, I think, to really tell. Alright, we got one little 
little more of a loop here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need a whole other piece of thread. He's done. I think it's looking decent enough. All right, I'm gonna, well, I think I might just get a fresh piece for that other leaf, just cause I know I'm gonna need, I know I'm gonna need it, so might as well just start fresh instead of having to switch it in the middle. Rest of that will turn into a pom pom at some point. Last, last little leafy. I'm gonna go totally upside down for this. You know, I could have been doing the sewing method this whole time. Let's do that. Sheesh, I think that would have sped things up. I, it's not my first, the sewing method is when you go in and out at the same time, in the same motion. This keeps my hands from having to be on the back too. I should have been doing this the whole time. It just, totally didn't occur to me to just now. I think with satin stitch I still get a little bit better accuracy going the stabbing method all the way um, going all the way to the back and then coming back out but I'm doing this now. stages, the little side loops. Alright, now I think I'll have to go to the back to get to the next spot. Okay, right here maybe. It's going a lot faster, but I think my accuracy is going a little bit. Get the top of this leafy bit. Good night, Amy. Have a great evening. All right, that's one side. I think parsley is actually my least favorite herb out of all these herbs. I don't know why, or let's let's call it my least used herb out of all these herbs. Maybe that's why I left it for last. Okay. 
groupies here. And we got ourselves some parsley. covered up that other color floss but we can we can find it in there let's poop this out a little bit there we go let's do that over here too that worked So that's our last herb. Um, so yeah, tomorrow we'll finish this up. We'll probably have time for something else tomorrow too. That'd be fun. I kind of want to make more zipper pouches, honestly. <laughs> we could do uh, more like like the next upgrade to the the simple zipper pouch, like adding some tabs or adding a pocket, uh, adding the boxed, boxed bottoms to it, like all that would be really kind of fun to go over. We'll see. Oh, let's remove all our clips. I'm like, why does it look so weird? Got all these clips everywhere. Okay, now let's kind of lay it flat. I'll press it tomorrow. Oh, there's a little puzzle there. Press it tomorrow before we stitch the last part. Ugh, I think it's looking so pretty though. Ooh, I love it. Yeah, just one extra little something right up here. Like, it doesn't need to be much. Just like literally, like, yeah, I just think I might just stitch like AT. Uh, or, I don't know, should I write something? I don't know. I guess it's just for me, right? So I can have it be whatever. I don't know. I like it. All right, you guys. So here we are. So you can kind of see them all placed placed on here. Yeah, so like right right here, it feels like it needs just a little a little extra something to balance the rest of it out. So I think that's what we'll do tomorrow. But I think it looks so pretty. Oh, a circle monogram. Oh, that's a fun idea, uh, Sylvia. Yeah, we could make it an obvious monogram. Um, oh, I like that. We could do like one of those things where we have like the middle letter and then like the initials. Uh, but then it would be weird because my middle initial is A. So it'd be like A-T-A. -A. That would be kind of funny looking. But yeah, it could just be like really kind of pretty uh monogram yeah with a little circle i kind of like all that and gretchen's initials are classy yeah so maybe maybe what we'll do is we'll just kind of sketch it out what it could look like on paper then attempt to transfer it that'll be interesting i think maybe i'll try transferring it with a carbon paper so we're gonna do a whole different way of transferring because I can't see through this fabric this like so I can't do like a light table I could either draw it directly on and not transfer at all just draw I could um, I could like poke holes through the paper and then just like draw on those holes or I could use a, a carbon paper it's actually a carbonless paper it's it's basically graphite a colored graphite that's on a sheet and um, this might this fabric might work well with that so then you just take like a stylus I just use the end of a mechanical pencil and then you can kind of just trace your drawing I think that's gonna be the technique so we're, we're gonna do a new technique of transferring uh, to fabric here um, yeah we'll do that tomorrow that'll be fun Ooh, a script front with a squiggle that'll be fun I'll have to look at fonts and stuff um, tomorrow uh, before coming on like just like yeah it could be like a fun 
special like AT or something. That'd be neat. All right. Well, awesome, you guys. Thank you again for hanging out with me as I finish some of these unfinished projects. It's feeling great. Like, it's all my little unfinished projects are getting checked off. Now I'm just going to have the big ones. Um, so this just feels like a momentum thing. We're going to, we're getting the momentum to finish all of them all of everything. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys again. I will see you tomorrow, the last day of June. <laughs> um, I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.